always have new wrinkles that pop up. Back home media. We are back. It's episode three of the Easy Out Podcast. We're brought to you by Back Home Media and produced by Fat Kid Productions. We're going to have a good night. we got one week. One week till baseball. Megan, how do you feel about it? I feel great, actually. I'm, I'm so excited. Yeah. Like, every time I have a bad day, I'm just like, baseball will be back soon. It'll be okay. Like, I don't even care. Baseball, 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 baseball. It's like, it's coming <laughs> That's back, what it's I do. <laughs> We've got, I thought about something that I did not write down for us to talk about. And then I watched the intro video and it reminded me, we have to congratulate Josh Donaldson. He has a baby girl on the way. That's so exciting. Josh Donaldson is going to be a dad. I'm excited, but I'm sad. I love <laughs> Josh Donaldson. Really excited for him though. So I want to get that out of the way. I saw the video. I saw him pop up on the video and I was like, oh, I forgot. They Josh just announced it too, I think. So. Yeah, they just announced it this last week. Um, him and his girlfriend, yeah. Brianna Miller, are going to be parents. So exciting news for Josh Donaldson. We got other babies coming. Mike Trout's baby's coming. Bryce Harper has a baby coming. Like, everybody's popping out babies. We know what everybody's been doing during quarantine. Not well, me. no, me. Not either. me. <laughs> <It's not laughs> mm -mm. Um, so to just jump right into everything, um, COVID testing, still ongoing. There's still delays. There's still a lot going on with this, um, but we do have some good news. We have really good news. Um, Jeff Passan reported earlier today, and it actually came from Buster Olney first. Um, I don't follow Buster because I don't like his attitude, but I do love Jeff Passan, who has been stacking bodies all week on Twitter. He's, He's my favorite. He's my so favorite. So monitoring tests. Collected and sampled in the last week, 10,548 tests. Of those, we have only six new positives. That is a 0.05% rate there. So that is really good news for Major League Baseball. Opening day looks like it's going to happen. We do still have some guys out, but we have guys returning. And I think these guys are going to really be the ones we need to watch. Um, seeing what is going to happen here. Um, you know, just kind of keeping an eye on how they're performing, seeing what they're saying as far as how they're feeling. Big news today for Braves fans because Freddie Freeman came back. Tuki Toussaint came back. Um, everybody was ready to run through the wall when that happened. One of the first players, however, to test positive before players even reported to camp was the Rockies' Charlie Blackman, all-star. Um, Everybody loves Charlie. I don't know who, who wouldn't love Charlie Blackman. I love Charlie Blackman. I think he's great. He's a, good guy. Um, he's a great guy. Charlie Blackman is back in camp, and we have a video of him knocking a bomb out today. So apparently, he's feeling really good. Charlie's taking him deep. He's got his mask around his neck still. I don't I think the beard probably protects him from just about anything. If he's got COVID, it's in the beard. <laughs> <laughs> like Ch Chuck Nasty out. is Chuck Nasty is a monster, and I'm excited. I'm excited to see him back. I'm glad he's doing well. Um, Freddie Freeman said Same. he's feeling really good. Um, Tukey was asymptomatic, but still had to wait on uh, two negative tests. So that's where they're at with all that stuff. New positives. I know in the list of the six, one of these guys was not mentioned, but we do have our oldest Chapman. From the Yankees, Mr. Got Lit Up by Altuve, 
last year. Um, I think that's probably the best meme from baseball playoffs last year was Chapman's face his, during his face. that home run. Um, during the offseason, Chapman hit the weight room. <laughs> Chapman got jacked and made a whole new series of memes. Like, that dude is a monster. He tested positive for COVID the day after we did the last show. Cause we were both over here going, oh, my God, you got to be kidding me. Like, we couldn't get this news <laughs> last night. Um, I, the next day I was like, come on. <laughs> right? Like, you sent me that link and I was like, really? Like, yeah. one of the biggest names out there that's tested positive so far and we don't find out until after we've already done the show. Um, Chapman, however... I mean, like I said, he's been hitting the weight room. He looks like a beast. I guess he's just going to sweat crazy. it out. Like, I know when I get a cold, I'll go to the gym, try to sweat it out of there. Apparently, Chapman is going to sweat out COVID. We have a video of the workouts he's doing while he's in quarantine. This is, what the hell? <laughs> I can't do that healthy um, he, he, and he almost looks here. like a different, he yeah, just doesn't even looks look like a like different person. Guy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's so crazy. It's like, what is this over here doing banded squats? Like that's probably my least favorite thing to do at the gym. You can see the pull-up bar on his rack. Like you're just going to act like you don't like, no, I don't have coronavirus or, you know, what the hell? Like the guy's a monster. It I have I a think, temp of 103. It's fine. Yeah. I've, I've got a massive fever. I've got chills. Like I don't, and I never heard if he was, did you ever hear if he was symptomatic? Um, I think he, I, I thought that I read that he was, had a fever or something like had a couple of them, but I don't like know. Mildly symptomatic. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Re I do know. I saw Aaron Boone say that um, they did not see him in being in camp for the foreseeable future, which sounds yeah bad. But he doesn't look like he feels bad. Like if he's over there dying, coughing every day, he definitely is hiding it well. Um, I mean, it's just kind of Jesus. I I can't imagine having which you know. I keep you hear like you see the live tweets of people like tweeting out what they're going through day by day when they're diagnosed and they're symptomatic, and just reading that. Like I can't imagine going for a walk around the block, much less getting like a legit workout in Yeah, while dealing my with that. My asthma doesn't even let me do that. So <laughs> it's like, I can't do that healthy. Um, <laughs> I've been out, I've been out of the gym for a while with all the stuff that's been going on. I've like barely getting back. There'd be no way. Like if I tried to do that, I would just, I'd get stuck. Like I'd hit the bottom of the squat and just be like, I'm done. I'm just going to sit here. Like I'm just finished. Perfectly fine right here. Yeah. Now um, our other big name, I was prepared to come and do this show and have like the best news ever for Braves fans, um, which it's actually, I mean, I guess it depends on wh which side of the fence you're sitting on as a Braves fan, because it's been pretty divided. We have the fans that been. are like, this is awesome. And the fans that are like, he's a cancer in the dugout, blah, blah, blah. Um, Yasiel Puig signed with the Braves this week. Um, what? My man. 48 hours later, tested positive for COVID-19, which his he, contract was dependent on a negative test. It, he, it's, thankfully, he's asymptomatic. So mm -hmm. hopefully that will um not i hope hopefully it will i what i'm really hoping again. for um and i don't know what the, i don't know what the braves will do in this situation if they're going to yeah. look somewhere else to get somebody in there immediately um of course we don't know how long he's had it he could be yeah on the home with him being asymptomatic he could be on the home stretch um, shout out to the fan that saw him leaving the Omni. You might want to go get tested if you got very close. Um, <laughs> cause we didn't know at the time, but, um, he says he feels good. He says he would never know, but please take the virus seriously. Um, which I would agree with. Please everybody stop fucking up the baseball season for us. I just want to watch them play. Um, but he's, I, my hope is that 
he'll get his two negative tests in a couple of weeks and the Braves will say, hey, you wanted to come. We want you here. Let's do this. Um, yeah, that's my hope anyway, because as of right now, he is still a free agent. The deal is there is no deal anymore. I didn't like young Puig, but I like older Puig. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't like, so, I, so I'll say I don't like Mattingly Puig. I like Dave Roberts Puig, if that makes sense. Yeah, I get that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, Charlie Culberson had good things to say about him. He said, you know, he can rub people the wrong way if he's not in your dugout. I completely get that. Of course. Um, but, you know, which I, I like. can see it because I went through a lot of years where I was like, oh, my God. God, like, what is with this guy? Like, licking the bat. Yeah. Being, but I think my kind of turning point for Puig was when Amir Garrett went after the entire Pirates organization, charged the dugout. You know, they get them separated, and you turn around, and Puig is still over here swinging on everybody, ready to go. <laughs> like, he had his back. He was ready to go. You like, could not calm him down. I, I like that in a guy because I like baseball fights, but I like a guy that's like, oh, we're going to do this. Okay. I don't care. Like, Let's you know, go. He's, got, he's got his teammates backs. And so for me, I was like, I like some showboating. I think it's fun. And that's where the hard line has been. Like people that are like, play the game the right yep. way. And people that are like, let the kids play. Um, I think it was going to be a great move. And now we just kind of have to wait and see how long it takes him to test negative and then go from there. Yep. Uh, hopefully he has a speedy recovery. So best of luck to Yasiel Puig. I am very sad today. Like, and it was so. I'm too. I mean, it was the worst timing. Yeah. The, a majority of the Dodger fans too are upset because they just want him to have a home because they, we all love our friend. Um, so well, there are a lot I mean, of people that, like we just want him to have a home because he just yeah. he deserves it because he's a good ball player. I mean, you can't deny he really that. Is. So, and when you see his explanation for why he plays the way he does, that he's just thankful yeah. to be here and to be playing. You know, I get it. Like, yeah. I can understand being really passionate about something and just going overboard with it. Um, I'm all about it. Oh, like, for sure. You know, I'm. You know, that's how Ronald Acuna plays. Like, if they didn't, if they yeah. don't like Ronald Acuna, they are not going to like Puig. Um. Puig is a more extreme version of it. And some people were saying that, you know, he's going to rob off on Ronnie and it's going to be bad. And no. just wait till Drew Waters it. comes up in a couple of years and then tell me how you feel about Ronald Cunha Jr. And Yasiel. <laughs> Let's just see how that goes. Um, I think there, I think people that don't realize what a showboat Drew Waters is are going to be in for a huge surprise. But uh, I mean, I was happy. I hope he comes to Atlanta, get some kind of deal signed. I, um, Hold I'm on. sad. Sorry. Like there were already t-shirts, Braves t-shirt people were already cranking out the shirts. There was the Puig, your friend with his face over the state of Georgia. The notorious PUIG shirts were coming out. My computer just started there? playing. Uh, my computer just started playing music. I'm sorry. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. We don't need a soundtrack. Come on now. I, well, it's Queen, so it's fine. No, seriously, oh, I don't know yeah. what's happening. It won't stop. There's a Twitter poll out right now. Which is better, Bohemian Rhapsody or Rocket Man? I like that. Uh, and I'm gonna part say, of me I'm wanted to vote Bohemian for Rocket Rhapsody. Man because of who posted the poll. But at the same time, oh. I was like, it's not better. <laughs> so we've Anyway. I'm good now. Sorry. You're good. Are we, are yeah, we not, yeah. are we going to have any more surprises? No, no. Okay. That was my bad. So no, my computer is bad. Sorry. I mean, you know, sometimes it has a mind of its own. My phone does that to me every now and then too. Yeah. It's okay. I'll forgive you Technology. this time. Okay. You're just banned this time, from the show forever. <laughs> you would never. Hey, I just want to tell you guys, before we go into the next one, everybody that's watching, feel free to, if you're watching on Twitter, you're going to have to click through and go to Periscope, but please feel free to join in the conversation. If you have any questions, comments, anything you want to add to the show, anything you want to ask us, um, you can drop it in the chat on Facebook or on Periscope, and we will be able to see it right here on our screen. We love, I love getting questions. I get questions and I'm just like, oh, I didn't think about that. Like last week, people were bringing stuff up and I was like, what? Oh, yeah. So if you want to join in with us, please feel free to do so. There's also um, next week, We'll get into it, but you can leave a voicemail or a text message through the Google voice number that's listed on the Twitter page. Um, 
go over there and check that out. Leave us your questions, comments, concerns. Tell us we suck. Tell us we're great. Tell us whatever you want to tell us. <laughs> we'll play it on the show. Um, tell me to learn how to use my computer. It's fine. Yeah, you can tell Megan she needs to get it together. You can tell me I need to get it together because lock, I do. Lock it up. Lock it up. <laughs> Come on. Straighten it out. Lock it up. So, summer camp, we're a couple weeks in. There has been a lot happening. Like, we've had the intra-squad games. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've had the intra-squad games going on. It's been really interesting to see, like, do you find yourself asking, like, do the Dodgers, are our pitchers bad or our hitters, like, you know, depending on the day. Like, if your hitters are lighting the pitchers up, do you find yourself going, are we in trouble with pitching? Or if the pit, or if the hitters are struggling, do you find yourself going, oh, shit, like, are we going to wake the bats up or what? I, I feel like it's a day-to-day -day basis because I feel like sometimes the, the pitchers aren't going full out because – it just, it just camp, you know what I mean? Or like, um, I, the, um, the pitchers want to have a day where they're on. So, you know, they're on it and, and you're like, Oh geez, like, you know, Corey Seager struck out to, uh, Clayton Kershaw, like what's going to happen. You, you know, it's just one of those things. Like, I, I don't know it, they, they're, it's, it's so day to day that, um, this is going to be really interesting because I feel like they, either go full out or they're just like, Oh, this is fun. You know? Yeah. Like I, and I love that they're having a good time. Um, yeah. It's oh, for sure. I think it's, it's really, it's awesome great fun with it. But at yeah. the same time, it's like, are you guys going all out? Are you taking it a little bit easy because you're playing yeah. each other? Like, you know, I know, yeah. um, Ronald or not Ronald Ozzy Albies was killing it the other night and was talking shit to Ronald Acuna the entire time. And, yeah. I wish I could have heard the chatter back and forth, but they were pumping in the crowd noise and you couldn't hear it. Like they would have been speaking Spanish and I would have had no idea what they were saying, but I wish I could I'll have translate. heard it. Anyway. Yeah. See, that's why you're around. I'm going to have to call I'll you. Translate. And say, what are they saying? Tell me what's happening here. Um, William Contreras hit another home run for the Braves, the catching prospect. I, I, I am excited to see him get up and show what he can he's, do. He's going to be really good. Like I, 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 that, I think that's the biggest thing for me. Um, I mean, even with college football, I know we're not talking about that, but, uh, um, I'm upset because there are so many prospects that are coming up, like within both of the sports that, um, I, I'm, I'm just upset that they didn't, they're not going to get a full year. Um, they're not going to get that shot. They should really have. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They're not going to be able to prove themselves in 60 games. Let's be serious. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I just, I'm, I'm upset for them because this could have, could be their breakout year and now it's not going to be, um, yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe it is, but at the same time, I just really feel like everybody, everybody's always going to be so negative and they're going to say, well, it was only 60, a 60 game season. If the season doesn't go the way that their team, they want their team's season to go. Exactly. Um, it, there's, there's always going to be an excuse. And I say this about Oregon all the time, like, okay, well, we're going to win a national championship one of these days, like seriously. And then you're going to say, well, you got lucky because you know, you're Nike university. Well, okay. So what, but like you, that is, so I'm, I'm just upset for them because it, it's, it's like, it's never, it's this year is going to just be like one of those things where it's, it's not going to be good enough for anybody. No exactly. matter what. Like the yeah. only people that it's going to be good enough for are is going to be the fan base of whatever team wins the World Series. Because yep. I will tell you yep. right now, last time we had a shortened season, the Braves won it all. And if they do it again this year, I don't care what anybody says. That championship <laughs> counts. But I'm also not one of those people like, you know, if the Dodgers win it this year, that championship counts. If the Astros who, if you are watching their summer camp videos, they're still knocking home runs. I mean, they may be telling each other what pitch they're yeah. throwing. I don't know, but Bregman's having a really good camp. Springer's having a really good camp. Everybody looks good oh, over on that yeah. side. Like if they come out and prove themselves and win it again, I'm not going to talk shit on it because it's a short season. Like it's, it is what it is, but I think That's there's everybody. a lot of what ifs after this year. Yeah. Like what about these players that don't get hot until after 60 games? Like, you know, what about the guys that are hot at the end? beginning of the yeah. season and not at the end of the season like what if you get the guy that goes like 20 or 30 game stretches back and forth through the whole season he doesn't have that opportunity i, I was watching 
I was watching a game the other day, um, and the one they said that Justin Turner had hadn't hit a home run before April, or like I think it was before April. And so they were saying, oh, well, he's not going to have to worry about it this year because, you know, opening day is in July. So he yeah. can hit a home run now. There goes, gonna, that. You know, the, that, there goes that stat, you know, like, um, so yeah, like, I, um, it's, it's going to be, it's just, it's going to be super interesting. It really is. And these guys have been like, I have been shocked at the physical condition of some of these guys. Pablo Sandoval excluded from that, of course. <laughs> um, like they're coming in, like the pictures we were seeing out of like Braves camp, of course, is where I look first. Um, Johan Camargo looking lean. Ozzy Albies looking jacked. Dansby Swanson's arms are like, I was sitting there going, uh, when did this happen? Like Ronald Acuna Jr. comes in with the new hair, like a whole new look. And I'm like, these guys have been, you know, Chapman bulks up all these guys have had these dramatic yeah. transformations over the off season. And it's just like, where did this come from? Like, are we channeling some anger? What happened here? Like you had nothing they else to do. So you just did the weights. Like these guys are jacked this year. Are we bringing the steroid era back? Like what's, what's going on? We're, like, we're bringing, we're bringing the quarantine era in. <laughs> I, something is, I feel like there's going to be a lot of home runs this year. I mean, we're already seeing them in summer camp. Yep. I feel like this is going to be another big home run year just because these guys are so much bigger than I'm used to seeing them. Like, and some of them have leaned out. Some of them have bulked up. Like there's been a lot of really dramatic transformations, like just looking you know, scrolling through Twitter, I'm like, who is that? Like, like CC Sabathia, what the hell happened there? Like, I can't, I can't he, believe some of the transformations I've seen um, during the off season. I guess maybe the, you know, you can't go anywhere. You might as well lift. You, um, might, as, you might as well. That's been I mean, one of I, the biggest I, I surprises. Won't. Like seeing everybody reporting, I was just like, whoa. I won't, I won't bring Jacques into it because everybody knows how biased I am, but he's. <laughs> I, mean, I, already brought Dan, I brought Dansby into it. You can go ahead. It's fine. He's, he's one of the ones I, I mean, literally when I saw him for the first time, like on, on the TV, I was like, it's Oh like, my God. What? Like, what? <laughs> Cause he was not, he was not like that the, in the years prior. And I mean, he, he looks like he's going to just kill it this year and i'm not saying that out of bias like i've seen a couple of tweets and and so on and so forth about it as well and people will agree with me some people won't because they just don't like jock but whatever i don't like you anyway it's fine you know do you know uh, how many just people kidding. i see post like we already have a shortstop that strikes out a lot knock a home nation <laughs> right <with> you <laughs> no hard yeah theory. right but like it's fine don't, friends don't that are like we should trade dansby we should get rid of dansby we should get rid of dansby yeah. i'm like Give him a good year and see how you feel about that. Yeah. Um, no, he, but, no, like, I, but, oh. And you're gonna get you're gonna get stuff like that no matter where you go. Like, okay. uh, like with Puig. So yeah, people either love you, love them, or they hate them, and it just is yep. what it is. Um, you know, I'll give you I'll give you props on your Jock Peterson stand. Like, you know, go for it. I mean, I'm. It, it's it's been since the the home run derby last year was when I started standing for him because that was. I don't know how many times I, I've watched that home run derby. And I will tell you, while Vlad Guerrero kills the ball, that that is just not the prettiest swing I've ever seen in my life. Like, he looks like he's – he just murders it. it. But I'm still just <laughs> like – he looks like he's going to fall over every time. I love Vlad Guerrero. I'm not talking shit on him. It's just a really messy swing to me. Um, but so I, I have watched that home run derby several times. And I, I do like – but as like as somebody whose number one team is the Braves, number two team is the Red Sox, I, when I'm paying attention to why are you looking at me like that? You know this. <laughs> when I'm paying attention to what's going on in LA, I'm automatically looking at Mookie because, yep, Mookie go. I don't want him in the National League. I don't. I love Mookie Betts. I don't want him in the National League unless Atlanta pays him the money. And we all know how Alex Anthopoulos loves the one year deal, and Mookie's not going to take that. So I either want him to go back to Boston or let's keep this whole divisional thing so we don't have to face him because Mookie Betts, I love him and he scares me. Um, some He's of the scared. bigger surprises, 
that we have seen. We've got a lot of good news coming out of camp. We've got a lot of good news coming out of camp. I think some of the more odd, awkward moments. Uh, let's. We've got a video, a little compilation here. Uh, some guys having some fun. Some guys throwing some dirty pitches. We've got some guys uh, just out there killing it. Clubhouse attendants out there killing it. Let's see the video Chico. that we've got of our summer camp surprises. Let's see here. There we go. We've got Hansel Robles playing a trumpet in the dugout. Um, we'll see if that carry. I would love for that to carry over into the season. If we got a guy <laughs> to play the trumpet on every team, put him out there. Like put him in the dugout. I love this thing. He looks like he's having fun. Like I love that. I love this so I much. Know, I I want to know what he was playing. Like what's happening? What song is this? Let me hear more. Like I need more details before I really get behind it. We've got Dylan Cease celebrating oh. his own teammates. Look at these pitches. It's dirty. Good night. It's really dirty. Like that guy. It, it is. And here we go. Don't Chico on Chico, everybody. That's the lesson we have learned from summer camp for the Dodgers. Don't run on Chico. Don't do it. Like clubhouse attendant. What the hell? If this guy doesn't end up on the team, I'm disappointed in the Dodgers. I really am. Like, where did this arm come from? Can Same. he hit? Do you know anything? I I don't know if he can hit. I'm I'm going to assume if his arm is great and his bat's probably just as great. I um, but they haven't let mean, they haven't let him bat. Well, no, I, maybe he DH'd. Actually, I'm not sure, but I know for a fact that he he. Dang, the guy's got a cannon. Yeah, man. And he can he can catch. He stole a, a, or robbed Seager of a home run. So, like I, he's an amazing defensive player. Like I think that has to be the most shocking thing I have seen coming out of summer camp. Um, the other thing that surprised me, and we showed Dylan Cease over there, um, the White Sox. Have you seen a lot of their videos? I have not actually. That they're, you know, they're a team that goes under the radar a lot, and I feel like that's dangerous. They do, they really do. Yep. And you know, they yep. picked up Dallas Keuchel. They've got all these other guys, um, mm -hmm. you know. And it was kind of billed as a rebuilding type thing. But watching like the videos I have seen, I'm kind of like, is this the sleeper team this year? Like, I've heard people say, don't count the White Sox out, but. Now that I've seen the videos, I'm really like, yeah, don't don't count the White Sox out. This is going to be – this could get ugly. Like, wow. Like, I'm kind of, oh, no, I'm thinking of worried. Detroit. Never mind. I was thinking of Detroit that swept in 2005, not the White oh, Sox. Man. No, yeah. uh, the White Sox. Different team. That was 2005. The White Sox won the World Series. It, it was. Yeah, I lived there. Okay. That was a party oh. and a half. Yeah, and they swept. Who, who did they play? The Cardinals? I don't remember that part. I was drunk through the entire World Series. <laughs> I, really I remember saying, "I remember saying the White Sox are going to sweep this," and I was like, I was in college at the time, and I was in a sorority, and all the girls were like, "Okay," and I was like, "Never mind." <laughs> it's like you guys know what I'm talking about. No, Never I mind. lived like that year. I lived like five minutes from Wrigley that year, and you know it was like, "Oh, we can go to the Cubs game." If the Braves were in town, I went to the Cubs game. Um, yeah. you know, if there was somebody I wanted to see in the national league in town, I went to the Cubs game. Other than that, I was on the train going to the South side, watching the big hurt, having a good time. Like yeah. I just remember during the world, like I don't remember the world series because I was drunk the whole time. Cause it was a huge party in Chicago. Like everybody was just like, Holy shit, shit we're bringing a world series back. And there was, yep. that was it. That was the end of it. I took the whole week off work. My boss was like, you're really not coming in all week. It's like, my shift's are covered. Don't worry about it. Like, I will not be here. Well, what are you doing? It's like, the White Sox are in the World Series. He's like, you're a Braves fan. I was like, I don't care. This is the World Series. It's the like, World Series and I'm here. Like, I, hello. I'm in the town where the World Series is happening. I have to, like, you know, and I never, I didn't get to go to a game, but I was on the South Side drinking in the bars. Yeah. Like, I, I was there. There was a year was that, um, there was a year that Tampa um, was close to getting into the World Series, and the Dodgers were too. And I was like, please, 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 please. Because like, like one of you, just one of you. I just need to go. We should have, you know, I I just thought about it. We should have um, pulled up the pictures that you posted of Puig when you were at the game. 
and Ozuna. Ozuna. Yeah, I saw those pictures. Um, your face it like practically got nailed by Puig's cleats. Um, that would have been really cool. Where was that at? That was it was on Twitter. It um well, yeah, on Twitter, but where were you at? Oh oh we were sorry, we were in um um the new Miami Stadium. Okay. And that was 2017. It was it was Ozuna, it wasn't Puig. Oh, um but shit. that that My made man. me that made no you're fine. That made me like an Ozuna stand forever and ever and ever because so backstory about that is there in um Miami Stadium, they have it's called the Clevelander Lounge, and you the seats are right there on the um the outfield yeah, track. Terrible. So Kike hit a home run, basically, and then got robbed by Ozuna. And I was literally sitting right there on the fence where he climbed the fence and I had dirt from his cleats in my <laughs> mouth. Like I like I think of the sandlot every single time. Like I, you're not good enough to lick the dirt off my cleats, but I'm like, I did. So whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. Um, but like, um, it, it, um, was so funny because he, I was so mad because the Dodgers swept the series. So it didn't really matter for me, but like, I was so mad because Kike was going to get a home run and then he, he robbed it, but it was such a good catch. He climbed the fence and everything. And, um, I was like, dang it. I hate you, Ozuna, but I love you. What a good catch. And he like turned around and went at me, like pointed. <laughs> and I was like, all right, this guy, See, this like, guy can I, stay. I was not that- excited. Like whenever all the free agency talk was going around during the off season and Josh yeah. Donaldson still hadn't landed anywhere, a couple of people were like, we should go get Ozuna. And I was like, you shut your mouth. Like, I don't want to <laughs> hear that. And um, I think my biggest thing was if we go get Ozuna, we're not getting Josh Donaldson. So no, I don't want Ozuna, and I hate it. He just, just, he really did a lot of work against us in the playoffs last year, and I really didn't like yeah, him at the time. Yeah, um, yeah. So then, when Josh went to Minnesota and crushed my soul, um, I was like, "Well, who's left?" Because that, because he waited so long, it was like, "Who's left?" And everybody's like, "We can go get Ozuna." Ozuna. And I was like, "Oh." God damn it. He's so he's so great though. He just like now he's that he's so there, great. now that he's there, I'm happy about it. Now that I'm just yep. like, you know what? Okay, I forgive you. Like, we're good. Yep. Are you still gonna wear yep. the neon arm sleeve? Because if you are, then we're good. But I just hope that we get more plays like what you were right there front and center for, and not like the one where he jumped on the wall and the ball landed. Yeah, like, yeah the, the one that Jesse likes to post all the time. Yeah, Jesse no, posts he, that all the time. He he's got a lot of good catches though, and I mean he's his he, sitting right there too. He's right there, obviously. So you watch his attitude on the field too, like his. Um, um, so the first time I ever, I ever sat there was when Ethier was still on the Dodgers and I got to watch like them interact with each other. And aside from liking to watch Ethier's backside, um, I won't lie about it. Um, you, you just got to see the, how they interacted with each other. And he, he just, he was, he's such a, I love, I just love his attitude to be perfectly honest with you. Like it, it was just awesome to watch him play. And after, after that whole thing. And then, so when I posted it on Instagram too, um, he actually, I tagged him in it and, um, he liked it. And then he said, you're welcome anytime. Like he actually <laughs> commented back when I said, thanks for letting me eat the dirt off your cleats or whatever. So like, you know, it just, the, the small interactions like that, um, make you like somebody and stand them like for the rest of your life. Like he's been, he, Ozuna's literally been on my, my, um, my, and you can ask my dad who's watching right now. He's been on my, um, uh, fantasy league team every, every year since then. And I, Mm -hmm. I pick him, I don't even care like what his stats are. I pick him purposely because I just love him. That's it. I get like that that experience. That's where I have a problem because, um, when I went on section 10, Jared was like, you're not a Red Sox fan. Right. And I was like, well, I'm kind of an everything fan, but my number one team and his, the look on his face was like, and I'm like, but it's, I get attached to players. I really do. And I, yeah. it, oh, it's yeah, a for fault, sure. but I do, I get attached to players a lot because of things like that. Like when you see the interactions or somebody has a really good attitude or just a, like, you know, Mike Trout, a lot of people say Mike Trout is boring. Um, I love Mike, you know, but you know, everybody loves to watch him because he's probably the greatest player in the game right now. Um, but people don't find him particularly exciting outside of his athletic ability. I love Mike Trout. I think he's great. Um, like Jack Flaherty, I will be the first person to 
admit that I hated Jack Flaherty for a long time, but I think this extended off season, he's really gotten to show his personality and I've seen a lot of it. Um, I don't know if Aaron's watching, you know, I love you. Even, even though Jack's your boy, I don't hate him anymore. <laughs> um, you've got to see some extended personality from these players and I've gotten attached to more players that I absolutely hated last year than ever before. Like Bryce Harper. I hate to admit that. I, I like Bryce Harper I now. Still, if you want to get mad at me, get mad at me. No, I'm not going to. I still have my qualms, but it's, it is what it is. Have you listened to I his 39 interview though? I have not. So maybe I should block off three hours of your time and listen to it. It took me two days to listen to the whole thing, but by the okay. end of it, I was like, okay, I like him. All right. Thanks a lot. Um, we actually, oh, we got a question in the comments over here. Don Hensler says, Ted Williams hit 406 in 1941, the last player to hit over 400 in a season. How do you think a 400 average over a 60-game season should be handled? Um, I think a lot of records are going to be, you know, they're going to do the math. Um, I think a 400 season is really question. possible. If you get a hot player... I think a 400 average season is very possible this year over 60 games. Somebody that starts hot and can keep it going um, definitely has a chance at that. Like if you get, you know, a lot of people are talking about the 40 for 40s and the 30 for 30s and how many home runs are these guys going to hit and everything else. If they start hot, there's no telling what you could see this year. Um, somebody said Acuna could go 40 for 40. I think that – could very easily happen, but I really think they're going to do the math. They're going to extrapolate all this data and um, figure up what the average would have been over a 162 game season. I think that's where they're going to factor in any kind of record that you're going to see. Um, obviously nobody has enough time to break home run records and stuff like that. Can you imagine if somebody hit 70 something home runs in a season this year, they'd be having a home yeah. run. They'd have to, They'd have to hit a dinger like two or three times a game to make this happen. I feel I feel like the only records that are going to be broken are the ones that are like career records, where mm -hmm. it, because you can only count those. Like so, Cody Bellinger is close to he's not. This is just a an example. Like he's close to you know his third three thousandth hit. Like mm -hmm. he, if he gets it, he he would have gotten it in the regular se like one hundred sixty two game season. So like those records, I are yeah. going to be the only ones that I feel like can be broken. I don't, I don't know if they're going to count it, especially even if you do the math, like what if they didn't have that intensity throughout the whole season? So, yeah, I, so, I think, yeah. you know, you have to, there's a lot that's going to be factored into it. I, yeah. it, I don't that's know gonna how they're going to handle that, to be honest. Um, you know, I think stats wise, you can only record what happened as far as your actual stats. Um, there'll be an asterisk besides it, of course, because it's a shortened season. Um, yep. but I think you, you just kind of have to roll with whatever's there. And, you know, I agree with you. I think you may see like people passing career milestones or maybe like, you know, career, you know, just any kind of career record has a chance. Um, anything else, there's going to be an asterisk beside it, um, Absolutely. Like, I don't yeah. think anything gets counted legitimately. Um, I had somebody ask me on Twitter the other day, do you think GM positions are safe this year? Do you think anybody will get canned? Um, I, I don't think anybody's ever safe in baseball. I don't think there'll be exceptions. If you have somebody sports period. Yeah. If you have somebody that can't handle a sprint season, you're not safe. Um, you know, there may be a little bit of mercy because it's a shortened season and because these are extreme circumstances, but I still think that if somebody bombs this season, you see a manager get canned. Um, uh, I just, I don't feel like, I don't mean GMs. I mean like, you know, on-field managers, of course. Um, yep. I'm tired tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't feel like these guys' jobs are safe just because it's a short season. Like, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen at all. Um, I think it it doesn't matter. If you don't perform, you don't perform. And when you know going in that you have to sprint the whole way, if you underperform in that situation, I definitely think that your job is in jeopardy, even under extreme circumstances. Yeah, almost like you're not taking it seriously. Like, yeah. uh, um, just because it's a shortened season, who cares? I think you have play, to take play. more seriously in a shortened season. Yeah. Oh, for sure. 
Like it's it's gonna be. I'm I'm interested to see what's gonna happen. You know, we get around to next week. We're gonna see what everybody can do. Um, you know, I I think it's gonna be like a crazy season. I think it's just gonna be everybody going all out every night. Mm-hmm. And I would love to. I just I don't know. I'm I'm excited for it. I think it's gonna be so different because we're used to having a hundred and two more games than what we're gonna get. So I think the fans get more pumped up. I think the teams get more pumped up. They're still having, they're finding ways to make it work. Like they've got the pumped in crowd noise. Yeah. Um, and the, the Dodgers games have been awesome watching. It, it sounds like there's nothing different. Yeah. You would never, like if you couldn't see yeah. the seats, you wouldn't know people weren't there. Exactly. And, you know, not knowing that people aren't there. Uh, some ball clubs are going to do the cardboard cutouts of fans. What do you think about that? I'm not going to lie. I've thought about submitting <laughs> my cardboard cutout. <laughs> I'm, like, not, I'm not going to lie. Some people are like, why would you pay that much for one? And I'm like, I don't know. See, the Dodgers are fun. charging a pretty I mean, high price, aren't they? They, they are. They're, well, I think all price. of them are doing it. The, um, I saw something where the, part of it is going to charity, but it's only like $12 of what you, the 150 or whatever it is. That, that's crazy. So that's, I mean, I, I, I get it because the organizations are probably struggling just a bit because we haven't had baseball when it started. I get that part, but like, I, it's only for one game. So I pay $150 for you to put my cardboard cut out somewhere. Like, I think, so, I think so. From what I've understood, I, I probably for $150, you better leave me up for the whole season. Yeah, right, right. Like, like I don't care if I get move me around. around. That decapitates my cardboard cutout. You better yeah. leave me there till the season is over. Like if the home run, if the home run ball decapitates me, I better be sent that home run ball, especially if it's a drop top. Let me just doing. sell. Have yeah. you seen oh, what the A's are gonna do? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Wade, I see your question over here about the first home run, and we'll come back to that in one second. We, I, I want, I don't want to forget what I'm talking about here. Um, the A's are charging eighty nine dollars to have your cutout put. You know standard seating yeah i think 129 puts you in like foul ball territory and if the foul yeah. ball yep. hits your cutout you get the ball yep so they're sending people the balls which is really cool i love that i think uh, it's great i i think it's if i haven't heard anything about atlanta doing it but if i get an email that says the braves are doing it i'm gonna be like can i start a GoFundMe so <laughs> i can get my cutout put like you know, i've been sitting here thinking about it i'm like I put want me, my card. I want my cardboard in, cut out in that in that state. What is that? Yeah, Braves fans are going to be mad at me. I've never been to Truist, so don't kill me. But what is it? Section is it one sixteen? That's right by the dugout in Truist Park. Somebody will correct me at some point in time. Um, my oh, tickets were in one thirteen and one seventeen. So yeah, one sixteen is the one that comes right down to the field. I think. Um, put me there. Put me right there. I want everybody on the team to see me. Like yeah every time they yeah. run off and on the field and i'm sure my head would get taken off by a ball at some point but i don't care at least at least it's not you it's just cardboard you it's, it's fun. my it's yeah it's just a cardboard cut out of me send it to me at the end of the season missing limbs with holes in it i <laughs> don't care put it there like someone was taking target practice on you yeah, like. it, that's what it's gonna look like can you imagine <laughs> if you've got one that's in prime foul ball territory every time a ball hits it's cardboard it's gonna go right through it. You're gonna get back. You're gonna look like you're, you were slaughtered when you, you only get, get back. You only get back your middle section by the time the, the right. Thing is like done. there's no arms. There's no nothing. It's just a torso. <laughs> Best one hundred fifty dollars I've ever spent in my entire life. <laughs> I would take it. I'd be so excited if I got a ball back from true, or if I got a box at the end of the season from Truist Park that was full of foul balls and what's left of my cardboard cutout, like. Please, please let me do that. I would love it. Like, there, you send it back to me in pieces. Like, here's your head. There's your right arm. Like, here's the Braves logo that you had across your chest. Like, that would, I'd be, like to report, that would be great. I'd love it. I'd like to report a murder. Here it is. That's You guys just completely obliterated it, and it's fine. Um, you know, I, I, think, I think it's going to be exciting, though. Like, they're talking about fans towards the end of the season. The Rockies have applied to let people in. The Red Sox said maybe, like you know, it's all kind of iffy. Um, yeah, it'll be it depends on. It'll be like, interesting to see yeah. what's going to happen. I mean, hopefully, you know, if people comply with the regulations that are out there, and we can knock it down somehow, um, we can get in by the end of the season, which would make my life complete. 
Um, not where I'm at. So don't, don't count on Florida for anything. So <laughs> same this is how I feel about Florida right now. I'm sorry. Nobody, nobody does anything in Can in Kansas and Oklahoma. It's, it's a disaster. So we're going to get to Wade's question. Wade said, who will hit the first home run of the season? You think, well, as much as I would love to say Ronald Acuna Jr. is going to hit the first home run of the season, the Braves don't play on the actual opening night. So let's talk about next week, what we're going to see on the schedule here. We have on the 23rd at 7 o'clock Eastern, the Yankees at the Nationals. And at 10 o'clock Eastern, Eastern, Giants at Dodgers. So Good thing I'm a vampire. I don't sleep, so I can watch it. Do we have anybody hitting a home run in, that, in those games? I mean, big, big teams. I mean, <laughs> I... I blame Giancarlo's success on my tweet. <laughs> Giancarlo stands not swinging at a ball the rest of the year after what happened, which by the way, Tanaka, no, he, he, he had like two home runs fast. Open, did yeah, great. I saw him. Yeah, I saw him. Oh man. He looks great. He's like, I'm back. I'm back. And you're like, okay, great. Do we have anything else about Aaron judge? Aaron judge is so injury prone. No. It's ridiculous. He, it's he hit a bomb right back from having his neck, his neck injury. Um, okay. So, so he's back right now. So he's back. He, but Giancarlo has been hitting bombs too. Um, so they're possible options. I mean, Soto has Montero a good bat. Is always um, on the um, table there, and he's the first. And he's the first game. So there's going to be a. The Yankees or the Nationals are definitely going to get a home run. Like there, the, I, I, I don't see any reason that there's not yeah. a home run in that game. If yeah, there's not sure. a home run at that in that game, and we get Giants at Dodgers next. I'm going to go with Jock Peterson. <laughs> I'm going with Mookie. No, I know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just going Mookie with my... one out in the first game. If yeah. anybody's going to do like, you know, if, if there are no home runs in the Yankees nationals game, I say Mookie Betts gets the first home run of the year. Cody Bellinger. I'll maybe. I'll go with that. Like um, I, I can see Bellinger hitting one giants. I don't, it's probably I, Van Hall gonna knock a bomb. <laughs> just because we made fun of him, actually, yeah, probably. We that's the old. That's not. the only reason why. Just because That'll, we made that, fun of him. That would life. happen. That would happen to me. Pablo Sandoval hits the first home run of the year because everybody's been talking shit. Like story, uh, story, story of our lives, right? I still, I, I still pick Mookie or Cody. Probably if if it doesn't happen, if it's not Juan Soto, I say Mookie or Cody probably. Yeah. I was gonna say Soto. I, I mean, the, they're the Yankees and Nationals are a good game to start off. Mm -hmm. I mean, but the season they also have to look at starting pitching. Um, you've got sure. Max Scherzer is gonna start for the Nationals. Hard man yep. hit off of. Yep. Garrett Cole will be starting for the Yankees. We got a video clip of Cole getting lit up by his own team today. <laughs> Let's check that out real quick. Oh, dinger number one. Yo. And I love, like, in this video clip, we've got the audio pulled out so that we can discuss this over the top of it. But in the video clip, they're talking about how Garrett Cole still has a lot of innings left in him and how he's, and then he's just getting lit up left and right. Um, I mean, I mean what you made. You never know. You never know what you're going to see. Maybe these guys are used to seeing him pitch, so it's a little bit different. Um, but I mean, you've got two aces starting opening day in that game. So it's either going to be a pitcher's yeah. duel or we're going to see a lot of balls getting hit. Um, yeah. Kershaw is starting for the Dodgers. And who's starting for the Giants? Um, Giants, it is. Johnny, Johnny, is it Cueto? I don't know how to say his last name. Yeah, it's Cueto, oh, right? Either. There's a lot of names in baseball that I'm kind of like, what? John, it's Cueto. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you know, Kershaw. Kershaw's a man that's hard to hit until you get to the postseason. Um, Don't got to tell me that. <laughs> sorry, I got I got to say it. Like there's you been <laughs> in the postseason for Clayton Kershaw. Um, so I mean that that's where straight I feel, up facts. That's where I feel you've got advantage, Mookie or Cody. Don Hensler says we're going with Cody. Uh, yeah. I think either one is a very my, strong possibility. Don is Don is my my dad's fiance. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think, I think it's a very strong possibility just because you've got so many aces on three out of the four teams. Yeah. 
Yes. And Cueto is not a bad pitcher by any means. Of course, he wouldn't be start opening, starting opening day if he was. Gotcha. Um, but at the same time, I just feel like the reputation is so much stronger for the other three. Um, Kershaw's always in there to... Yeah, looking at that battle, yeah. I, I'm definitely going with somebody on the Dodgers is hitting the first home run of the season. Now, if we were to jump over to the next day, the first game the next day is the Braves at the Mets. Excuse me, but I hope, Giuseppe, cover your ears if you're watching. Um, <laughs> I hope that Ronald Acuna Jr. lights shit up. He can do it, you know. And then if you go, you, you go down to the Blue Jays. It could be um, Vlad Jr. Yeah, Vlad could very easily hit one. You, you the know, these guys have been looking. Ozzy Albies could knock one out very quickly. Um, the Braves, I mean, the Rays, the Rays also have. Uh, I know that nobody talks about him, but I actually had a conversation about him earlier. The Rays have Choi. I don't know if you know he saw Choi. He's yeah. really good and he's a fan favorite. Like I've been to a few Rays games, obviously, because that's the closest ball yeah. park that I'm at. Um, they love him and he is um his swing and the way he 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 hits the ball, he could have I, there's there's a lot yeah. of you know there's a lot of possibilities opening yep. day. Um, you know, just because of the way the schedule is written, I think you're giving the advantage to somebody on the Dodgers. But if you get yeah. into a pitching duel, yeah. it can very easily spill over to Ronald Acuna, um, Ozzy mm -hmm. Albies, Ozuna could be the first home run of the season. That's a big bat, too. You know what? I um, hope so. Because you, <laughs> you know how I feel about him. So <laughs> I'm going to throw in my own personal feeling, which is going to make people go, really? But Dansby Swanson's pretty clutch. If we've got a close game over there, <laughs> yeah. my boy can do it. Um, Good. I love the twins. So, I mean, I've with I mean, Joe Mauer stand for how long? Donaldson could be the first home run of the season. Well, you, you, got, you got Rich Hill there too. And uh, I, it's, I just very, love the... it's very, very up in the air. I mean, July yeah. 24th, you've got Braves at Mets, Tigers at Reds, Blue Jays at Rays, Brewers at Cubs, Marlins at Phillies, Royals at Indians, Orioles at Red Sox. I'm, Boston's winning that game. Okay. Let's just, just hand it over <laughs> to them. Boston's got that game. Um, Rockies at Rangers. That should be a good matchup. Twins at White Sox. See, I want to watch that game. Twins at, at White Sox? Twins at White Sox. The Twins were a home run hitting machine last year. So they that could so be good. If we've got some pitchers duels in some of these early games, it could be Twins at White Sox where you see the first home run. Um, Tim Anderson is scary. Like, you've got a lot of good players on the White Sox, yep. but then you've got the Twins that were just cranking them out last year. So that's that's a game I want to see. Um, yep. Pirates at Cardinals is another one. Mariners at Astros. That's... The Astros are going to obviously the dominate. So that game. As much as that hurts me on the inside to say, I, <laughs> it's going to happen. So. That's that's going to happen. The Astros have got that game. We've got Diamondbacks at Padres and then the Giants at Dodgers again and Angels at the A's. That I mean there's there's some interesting matchups through that. Um starting pitchers for those games. This will be There's some interesting names in here. There's a couple of names that I was kind of like, "What?" But um the Angels are starting Andrew Heaney. The Rangers are starting Lance Lynn. We already talked about Clayton Kershaw starting for the Dodgers. That's a no-brainer. But I also kind of feel like Walker Bueller is getting close to earning that spot. He he's gonna take he's gonna take over soon. He's gonna take over the starting. I um, love Walker Bueller. Walker Bueller is oh he's. I love he, my. I've yeah. got that's my Vandy boy. I love Walker Bueller. Um, yep. The Reds are starting Sonny Gray now. Listen, all personal feelings aside, I'm a little hurt that it's not my man, Trevor. My brother. Your brother. <laughs> I love Trevor Bauer. Um, I'm a little hurt. Like, I would brother love to from another that. mother. I understand it. It's, a, it's an excellent choice. Sonny Gray's a great pitcher. Um, I still would have liked to have seen him go for it with Trevor Bauer. I, I just, I feel like it would have been more fair. 
He's um, been so Mariners, savage in this off season that I feel like I feel he like deserves he's really so a position. People. Um, Jeremy Morgan says the first home run will come from the first guy who hits a home run. Jeremy, Thank you have you, an Jeremy. excellent point there. You're so insightful. <laughs> you're you're, you're the best. Call. You're you're the best best friend I've Are ever had. Are you putting money on that somewhere? Like, how do you how do you bet like that? Can you can you do that? Where, where what casino in Vegas can I bet on that? Please, Wade, tell us what casino in Vegas, Vegas that we could throw that bet down. Wade is in Vegas. So tell us oh. where you could throw down that the first home run will come from the first guy who hits a home run, and I will go put money on it right now. Um, Nationals versus the Yankees. We already said Max Scherzer is starting that game. That guy scares me. Like, he's, he's just – he's and really you know, intense. And you know he has two different colored eyes, right? Yeah, that's what scares me. Yeah. <laughs> I have friends that have two different colored eyes. And it's not like I don't even notice it most of the time, but for some reason his is really pronounced. And when you look at him, like his players, it's picture, crazy. It's scary. Like he's scared. That guy. I he's have, just I so have intense. A, I have a Twitter account that's Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer is brown, brown eye. eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> Wade says you can do that at Williams Casino or South Point Casino. Wade, go put some money down for me. <laughs> Same. I'll, uh, give, I'll Venmo you. Let's see. Um, Orioles have John Means. The Royals have Dan Duffy. The Braves are putting the Maple Maddox out on the mound, Mike Soroka. Youngest pitcher at 22 years, 355 days. So I I am excited about that. Soroka is an ace and a half. Like I, yeah. I love Mike Soroka. Um, Giants, Johnny Cueto. We already talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, Sandy... Alcantara. I don't know how a lot of these names I'm bad at, so everybody forgive me, but it's not great sometimes. Alcantara. Yeah. Okay. I did it right. Yep. Sweet. Then he's starting for the Marlins. The Cardinals. I am not surprised by this at all. At 24 years, 283 days old on opening day, Jack Flaherty will be the youngest Cardinals pitcher to ever start opening day. And That'll be a good a good game to watch. If this would have happened. Six months ago, I would have, or even, you know, when it was supposed to, I would have been like, fuck that guy. Now I'm probably going to be like, go get him, Jack. Come on. Go get him. Go get him, Jack. You can do this until he plays the Braves. And then it's back to, I don't like you for three days. And then we're okay again. Um, we already talked about Garrett Cole. The Astros are, of course, Verlander, of course starting Justin Verlander like you would I don't know why anybody would not start Justin Verlander I mean not, starting... I, would, I would I would argue Granky could probably do it too but that, mm. I'm I'm kind of west coast biased and that's where he came from so yeah um that's Cubs are starting Kyle Hendricks Indians are starting Shane Bieber I do love me some Shane Bieber not Justin. I, I mean, I kind of, I was almost expecting to see, uh, I thought maybe Clevenger would get that nod. They're just kind of maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's okay. He's, <laughs> I, I mean, have... I'm happy that Shane Bieber got it. I love Shane Bieber. So yeah, um, that's a good one for me. Now, the Pirates, this guy I don't like. This guy I don't like at all. Joe Musgrove. If you will remember, he is the pitcher who got into the fight with Josh Donaldson last year and immediately did not yeah. want the smoke. As soon as Donaldson tossed the catcher out of the way, Musgrove was kind of backing up. Um, not like, a big whoa, fan. Whoa, whoa. Not a big fan. Happy for him. The MLB played a video or some the Pirates played a video of him calling his dad to tell him that he got that spot. Um, so that was it was a very touching moment. Still not my favorite. Don't care. Um, congratulations <laughs> on the roll, Joe. The Brewers are picking Brandon Woodruff, and the Twins are going with Jose Barrios. Um, not, I probably said Rich it wrong. Hill. Come on, probably said okay. it wrong. That's okay. Um, I think it's Barrios. There's a. I mean, there's going to be some interesting, interesting matchups. So it'll be, uh, it'll be really cool to see what happens starting off. Now, um, I missed something while we were talking about the cardboard cutouts. And I have to go back to it. Um, the Dodgers are one of the teams that are doing the cardboard cutouts. Now, we have a photo. And if the Dodgers do not make this the cutout behind home plate, 
I feel like we are really missing the mark. Put up the picture. They're going to do it. They need gonna to do, do it. this. I will tag them over and over again, and I will come. I from think Florida. everybody needs to start tagging the Dodgers. Where's our photo yep. at? Let's see. Come on, guys. There, oh, there it back. is. This needs to be behind home plate, and if it is not, I feel like they have failed. Um, yep. it's 100%. a great opportunity. It's such a good opportunity to honor Kobe. Um, I yep. mean, it's such a great picture. Like, I love this moment. Like, every time I see this photo pop up somewhere, I just kind of, like, and I always have. Like, I loved co how hype Kobe was at that game. I and ironically, the it's Puig to, that hit the ball. They need to put that behind home plate, just right in that spot. Like, it needs to yep. be there. I feel exactly like that's in that seat, just like that. Yeah, that is a must. Um, yep. It's got to happen. Now, um, we got we got one last thing to talk about now. Like, I'm, I'm sorry I missed that before. But, um. It's okay. It was worth going back to. It's fine. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So coming out of summer camp, going into the season, we've got all the aces that are starting. We've got all this big stuff happening. We have some really awesome Cinderella stories going into opening day. I, I, I would call them Cinderella stories, kind of. Um, the Rockies have picked up some guys in the offseason that people seem to have kind of given up on a little bit. And props to the Rockies. You know, Matt Kemp. Matt Kemp found out today that he made the roster. Super exciting. I love Matt Kemp. I'm super pumped for him. Daniel Bard. This guy has not played in the majors since 2013. Made the Rockies roster today. And the Rockies the other day announced Bard's number in a very unusual way. We have a photo of that as well. Bard getting up there. He's number 52 for anybody that doesn't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the poor I'm guy. Sorry, really um, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's what happens when you don't know. But Bard has come out there. I mean, this is a comeback story like no other. It's He hasn't pitched in the majors in seven years. And he that's finally great. finds a home. He makes it on a roster. Um, you know, former Red Sox player. Really excited for this guy. Um, I hope he has a great season. Uh, there's just so much. There we go. April 2013 <laughs> to July of 2020. He even looks different. He does. He's changed a lot. But yeah, I'm really excited for him. And I just want to I want to put it out there in the universe that Pat Light, your career is not over. If Daniel <laughs> Bard can do it, so can you. If Dennis Quaid can do it, so can you. <laughs> See, you know, Pat, um, we'll give a quick shout out to Pat. Before, wait, hang on. I'm going to answer Wade's question and then we'll give a shout out to Pat. Wade says, will stats for players change for the higher average for next year since the games are fewer this year? Um, I don't, I think they're just going to roll with what they've got. Like you're going to see, you know, they may decide later on and we kind of touched on this. They may decide later on to extrapolate it so that it matches or to average it out. But Without having 162 games, you can't really figure an average for 162 games because there's so many other factors, you know, injury, all kinds of other things. It's just too hard to, um, yeah. I think it'll just be too hard to figure that out because you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, we'll just have to see. Jeremy Morgan says, love the rookie <laughs> reference. Now, um, we're going to go back to Pat Light for a second. I want to give him a shout out and and I want to say, please come on my show. Please, Pat, please come on my show. <laughs> I'm not above begging. I don't care. I'll beg this man. Um, I mean, I'll Pat, do it too with you. Pat just launched his own podcast called Sorry, We're Closed. And a lot of people aren't going to get that reference. That is the final line from the final episode of Cheers. Now, Pat is your real life Sam Donaldson. Pat is a former MLB player who owns a bar. Um, so that's where the name came from. If you haven't listened to that, go to thepatlight.com, listen to episode one. It's great. He's going to drink and talk baseball, and that's what I'm doing right now. That's great. So um, we've got a question over here. Adrian 0677. Whoops. Who are your MVP and Cy Young predictions? Who you got, Megan? Um, that's, I don't know. I really don't. Um, I, this season is just going to be so weird because it's cut in half. Um, 
my MVP, obviously, I'm going to probably pick for my own team. Um, but also, I mean, to be fair, if we had a 60-game season last year, Christian Nellick would have won. Mm -hmm. I cannot deny that. Um, that's See, I have, just how it is. Nelly has yeah. started off cold. Yeah. He uh, finally um, got a hit the other day, he, and they kept the ball as a joke. He did. He did. <laughs> he did start off cold, but, but I mean, like last year, like if the the season would have been cut in half um, without his injury, he 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 would have won. Um, he was just that much better than Bellinger. I mean, I, I'm not saying that Bellinger got lucky that he got injured because I would never say that. Um, it 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 worked out how it worked out, but that's why that's why it's going to be so weird this year. Because you, the season's not as long as it is. So uh, what I said earlier, everyone's going to say, well, it was just half a season, so it doesn't count. Like, it, it's, it's half a season at that. Yeah, yeah, like less than half a season. Um, it, it's, it's for Cy Young. I mean, I could even, I could even um, argue that Kershaw could win Cy Young again. Mm -hmm. Because he's, he's got he's got a solid season. Um, I mean, Verlander could too. If you look at Verlander and Kershaw in the off season, Verlander has, a, I'm, I'm sorry about it. Verlander has a, t a worse record in the off season than Kershaw does. I'm just saying I'm putting it out there. No, post season. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm tired too. It's fine. Um, but like it, you, it, it's just, it's going to be really weird. It's, I mean, he, it is like you, there's yeah. a lot of things to take into account. Um, lightened workload. Like these guys are looking, if you have a five man rotation, you're looking at 11 yeah. games a piece throughout this season, barring no injury. If everybody stays healthy, you're looking at 11 games. A couple guys have 12. Yep. Um, that's a huge change. You, you know, you're looking at, a quarter, almost a quarter of what you're used to pitching. Um, guys like yeah. Kershaw could go into the postseason really hot. And, and the workload. it's going to exactly. be a huge. Like there's just so many unknowns. It's really hard. Like if I want to just go out on a limb and be like, oh, who's my NL MVP? Uh, I want to say Ronnie because that's yeah. my, because that's my guy. Like that's my that's team. Your boy. Um, but there's I a mean, lot I of could... other people. I there's could say Jock because he could come back. Like, is and, it and have, and, and, yeah. Mookie Betts is in the National League. How do I not be like, Mookie could have an MVP season? You can't say that. Yeah. Um, you know, AL, of course, you always look at Mike Trout first. Um, then you kind of trickle it down from there. What if somebody on the Astros, I know it's really dicey because people don't like them right now, but what if George Springer, Alex Bregman have an insane season? Like, there's a lot yeah, of Korea. Um, yeah, Altuve, Korea like could, they, I, they could. Uh, that's you the never, one guy just, that I'm kind of like, ugh. But yeah, you know, I mean, have Gr Granky, Granky could even have a, a Cy Young season. You just don't know. You just don't it's, know. It's, it's just going to be, be so weird because it's just not anything we'd ever we've ever seen before. And I would have to um, quick shout out to Jeff Passan, not only for stacking bodies all week, but for doing that fan graphs giveaway. Um, I was one of the winners on that and I have yet to, it's been such a crazy week. I haven't had any time to really dive in and play with it. So that would be something, um, since you're asking like, you know, who are our predictions? I would want to dig into stuff like that and kind of look and see what we've got. Let's see. Jeremy says after 60 games, Charlie Morton probably wins Cy Young in the AL last year. See, that's, there's a lot of unknowns there. Like yeah. Michael's over in the AL again. You know, what if he has a Cy Young season? Don't yeah. know that it would happen, but it could. Um, you know, you've got Kershaw in the NL. You've got, um, and you can't forget Garrett Cole in the American League. You've got Max yep. Scherzer. Soroka could have a great season. Max Fried is a candidate. I don't see Cole Hamels being a Cy Young candidate because he's had some injury already. Yeah. Um, but I do feel like the but Braves have a good. huge value in him being there to mentor these younger guys. Like, I think that's going to be a huge thing for them. Um, yeah. so he may not be a Cy Young candidate, but I definitely think he contributes to one of those guys being a Cy Young candidate. Uh, there's just like, I'm going to have to go do some digging and playing with some fan graphs and stuff like that. And just, you know, yeah. kind of looking to see what I really think is going to happen. But 
it's I just kind of have to isolate it to the first 60 games because that's all you really have to go off of is we have 60 games. Yeah. And I also think it's does somebody get to the postseason and choke? Because if they do, you're out of the running. Like I think that automatically people are just gonna write you off. Like they do. They I mean it happens all the time. If you're choking in the postseason, you're gonna get written off for a lot of things. Um, you know, I think it's robbed a lot of good players. <laughs> <laughs> it's robbed a lot of good players from a lot of awards. Team, teams. <laughs> yeah, teams, players, everybody. It, it, it will rob you from some awards um, if you're not. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Too. For sure. So um, I, I would love to have like a definite, this is who I think is going to get it. But with a short season, I just, I don't know yet. I want to get like, maybe revisit, revisit that in a couple weeks. Like ask me again then. Yeah. Oh I'll, yeah. That's a good question. Kind like of what I two, think. three weeks into the season. Yeah. Cause right now, I will tell you every night, like that's going to be my computer screen, laptop, tablet, phone, phone, like TV. I'm going to bring the TV in the office. Like everything is going to be on baseball all day, every day for as many games as I can possibly get my hands on because of the shortened season. So that will kind of be a little bit more like I'll be yeah. watching everybody at the same time. Yep. I mean, it could be, it could be someone that, that you wouldn't even suspect to be MVP because they just have a breakout year. Mm -hmm. I mean, like there's, there's, it's just, it's, this is going to be the craziest baseball season. I think we are going to see for a very long time. Agreed. Um, totally agreed. I'm really excited for it, but I, it's just, there's just too many unknowns. Like I could, you know, you could throw out somebody that you think is just a surefire bet for anything. Yep. And one little injury, if Aaron judge gets injured, Yankees fans, I'm sorry, but you guys can kiss it. Goodbye. Like he's going to be yeah. done. Like There's not enough time. Um, nope. everybody just, you have to stay healthy. You have to be on top of your game every game. Like there's no room for a bad game. It's just, it's going to be really crazy and I'm excited for it, but I just don't know what's going to happen yet. It's going to be very cutthroat. Oh Yes. It's yeah. going to, I think, and you know what? And I hate the no fighting rule because I think in a short season like this, they're <laughs> bad ass. We want, we want some, we want some brawls, man. Come I want to see go. it. I want to see Amir Garrett go after a team some, again. Like, some hockey style. Like come that on. was like Amir Garrett just charging towards the pirates dugout is my favorite fight ever because he didn't care if anybody had his back he was going. He was just there. He was I, like, I do yeah, love to do this. Let's go. Um, I do. I do love the Phillies and the Dodgers. I can't remember what year it was. It was the first that was year they swept fight. the Cubs. That was a good fight. Like, I, I hoped, I really had hoped. Like, here's the bad thing about the Braves. They're really nice guys. It's like a team full of nice guys with a couple of exceptions. So last year when Josh Donaldson throws off, like, flings the bat, throws off the arm guard, and he's like, what the fuck you looking at, bitch, to Joe yeah. Musgrove? <laughs> I was like, oh, we're going to get it. We're going to get a fight. We're going to get a fight. And he goes charging out there. He's ready to fight. Everybody else is like, wait, wait, calm down. Calm yeah, down. Yeah. You know, you've got Max Fried holding him back and Charlie Culberson trying to make him laugh. I'm like, no, let him go. Let him go. I want to do it. Like, please, the, I want to fight. That, vi that video where um, Muncie, Ver I think it was Verdugo, uh, Kershaw, and – there's one other person. They just like climb over the, the the dugout fence and they're like, "We're going." And but they like do it so calmly. But they're like, "Nope, this it's going down." Like, I like that's this, that is the thing I'm gonna miss. What are you gonna miss the most about the season? Because that's mine. The fights are mine. I apologize I, for my dog. I don't. I don't know yet. I really don't know yet. Um, but the, I mean, the fights obviously are good, but how, how for also like, how are you going to stop that from happening? Like someone's going to have to stop someone like, at some point. Like to be completely honest, I think at some point in time, everybody was prepared for the Astros to get thrown at. Yeah. I see. The, um, no I don't foresee that. Yeah. That they go 60 games getting thrown at and don't fight back. True. Or, like, or they're just, they're all going to be civil and it's just not going to happen. Like, I don't, I mean, they're having a lot of fun in summer, in camp, like yeah. something where the season is just a little more lighthearted, but I just, I don't see, I, I don't want to fight into it. Like yeah. I just, especially with how intense this season has to be, there's going to be a fight somewhere. It's like, who's it going to be? 
Especially with rivals. Like I, I can foresee like the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers having a tiff because we, they've become sort of a, a rival almost as bad as the Giants, like because of previous seasons. So mm-hmm. I could see, foresee something like that happening. Um, so maybe fights, but like, I, I also think if, maybe like closeness in the dugout. Cause I know that that's kind of like a thing mm-hmm. too, where everybody has to kind of like separate and they can't be, you know, um, dugout for me, dugout chemistry is my biggest thing. Um, I love to watch the dugout cams. Like I think yeah. my, I am going to, the thing yeah. I'm going to miss the most in Braves baseball is Ronnie and Ozzy all over each other all season. And Dansby yep. Swanson constantly kissing Ozzy Albies on the forehead. Like, I, yep. I don't know why, but that's like my favorite thing to see at the game. Every time I see him grab him by the head, I'm just like, because it's great. Because it's great. It's just great. Like, um, dugout chemistry for me is one of the my my most favorite parts of baseball, just because if you if you're watching what's happening in the dugout and you can see them having fun, like obviously the game is fun. Like even, even in the worst parts of Dodgers, like game history. Yeah. Um, If you're having fun, fun exactly. The the dugout, the dugout gets you pumped up for the game. Even if you're losing, like the the celebrations will be the other thing too. Like the walk off celebrations, stuff like that. I'm going to miss a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's just, it's going to be a weird season. We're excited about it. Um, you know, we will be here next week. We don't, I don't know for sure if we're going to go on the 23rd or if we're going to wait until the 24th, but we are going to go, um, one of those nights next week, recap the games. We're going to talk about some of the big plays. Um, so make sure you guys join us, like the show, share the show, like us on all the social channels. Um, you can go to back home media and you can find us over there. If you want to go on Facebook, Easy Out Podcast, Twitter, Easy Out Podcast, Instagram, Podcast Easy Out, because somebody's got Easy Out Podcast and they're not (laughs) using it. So thank you, whoever you are. But Podcast Easy Out on Instagram. You can also find us on YouTube at Easy Out Podcast. So um, you can catch all the episodes there. We'll be doing some more fun stuff there. We'll have some behind the scenes kind of stuff. Maybe our our blooper reels from before the show and after the show. Some of that will start <laughs> soon. You may or may not want to see it, but make sure you're checking it out. Um, like I said, like us, share us, join us next week. Megan, thank you so much for being here with me. Always. Yes. It's a pleasure. All right. I don't see any more. Uh, I see no more questions over in the comments. So let's call it a night. You guys have been right. awesome. Thank you for all your questions and comments. Like I said, be on the lookout on Twitter. We'll post the uh, voicemail number so you guys can leave us some comments. We'll play your voice on the air. and We all get to sound how lovely, see how lovely you sound. Blah. Um, anyway, good night. Everybody have a great evening. Good night. Well, I don't think it, I thought it, that's different I said what I said and I meant it, or lamented Words given weight without thought in a person The way that I talk and the way that I ought to be able to pause And to say that the fault can be placed on my arms And this playful assault to disgrace in this arm Pray for the day they could wait for the calm You can't control the storm Only weather it, weather it it's five weeks and five days of rain Sideways, a scorched earth Search for death or water Left with all the thorns With the petals gone Settle on the breath of autumn